Hey, I'm Jay Malone. Uh, as much as I like to write, I am not the best reader. So I've decided to include readouts of each of my newsletter posts for those of you that are on the go or just in general prefer to listen to content versus uh, read it with your eyes. And so I'm gonna include these for each upcoming post. Give me some feedback, uh, reply to this email post and let me know if you like this. Without further ado, let's get into today's post, how to create a landing page for your first digital product. Five foundational elements, how to communicate benefits, landing page tools, and lots more. Okay, here we go. In the last post, we covered building your first digital product. Today, we're, we're creating your product's landing page, AKA the place on the internet that your prospective customers will discover, review, and purchase your product. Unlike a website that acts as a catch-all for your services, company background, contact info, and blog, a landing page has one job, convert leads. In today's post, I've researched and curated everything you'll need to know to create a successful landing page for your product. We'll break down the following. One, five foundational, element, five foundational landing page elements. Two, communicating benefits instead of features. Three, tools to create your landing page. Four, best practices for you to follow. And five, tips for outsourcing if you choose to do that. And if you just joined Passive Pro Profits or someone forwarded this email post to you, this post is part of the following four-part series called Your First Product. In part one, we covered how to prep your first digital product. Part two was about how to build your first digital product. Today's post is about creating a landing page for your first product. And in the next post, we'll talk about how to launch your first product. That drops November 12th. Ready to create your landing page? Let's do it. Okay, well, before we jump in, do me a favor. You know that voice rattling around your head telling you, you can't build a landing page. You're not a designer or marketer. Go ahead and leave that imposter syndrome at the door. You can totally do this. Take it from someone who's entirely self-taught, yours truly. And by the end of this post, you'll see you're more than qualified to create an effective landing page. So let's jump in. Landing pages 101. Let's break down the five key elements of your successful landing page. Number one, a captivating headline. Your headline is the first thing visitors see, your elevator pitch. It needs to immediately convey what your digital product is about in as clear a way as possible. Keep it concise and compelling, highlighting the primary benefit your product offers, the dream outcome. Take, for example, Unbounce, a platform for building landing pages. Well, it just so happens they happen to have a kick-ass landing page. Well, <laughs> holy shit, if they don't, they're in trouble. Uh, in the newsletter, you'll see a picture of the unbounced landing page. So take notice of their use of digits. They've got in there the number one and the number 15,000. So the thing is, when it comes to numbers, our brains love them because they're shortcuts to reading. So especially, right, the guy that's reading you aloud a uh, newsletter post, I don't like to read. By including numerals, you make it easy for your visitors to scan and translate the suggested value behind them. Okay, that's number one. Number two, engaging visuals. So a picture's worth a thousand words, right? Use high quality images, videos, or graphics that showcase, showcase your product in action. More than understand, visuals help visitors experience your product's value. The right value will suggest how they'll feel by using your product. That's a power move in convincing them to take the next step. I love how meditation app Calm uses beautiful imagery of a peaceful mountain and lake scene. I haven't read a single word of copy and I already feel more relaxed. True story. I also really like how Podia, one of the creator platform tools that we're gonna get into, uses that lovely upward curving line that every business owner dreams of. They combine it with four simple stages, start, build, grow, and scale, to suggest that Podia will help you earn and grow your online business. And there is also a picture of, there's a picture of the Calm landing page, and now there's also a picture in the newsletter post of the Podia 
landing page. So there are a couple options to find and create your images. One is Pexels or Pixabay. These are similar and seem like almost like they're cousins. Maybe it's the same owner, I'm not sure. But they have um, royalty-free photos taken by pros that you can download. There's also Dream Studio. So Dream Studio is, is a cool tool. There's, there's a few of them out there. This is the one that I've used. And you can use AI to generate custom images based on your prompts. But I'll give you some warning. It takes practice. Prompt engineering is like a new skill that we're all learning in order to communicate with AI and get the things out of it that we put in. Uh, so it takes a little bit of practice to get the right images. And AI is still catching up. So you still get the occasional hand with seven fingers and a nose instead of an eye. You know, bear with it. Okay, that's two. Three, in, you know, within the five foundational elements of your landing page is compelling copy. Your copy should elaborate on the promise made in your headline. Use persuasive language to explain how your product can solve a specific problem or fulfill a need. If there's one thing your prospective customers know about, it's their thorny problems. Highlight the benefits and features that set your digital product apart. Airbnb absolutely nailed it by showing you the money, more numbers, that you can earn by listing your property with them. And there's a picture of their landing page where it says Airbnb at the top and then you could earn $1,253. That's immediately clear and attractive to me. If I were looking, if I were someone looking to list their house and make money, but they didn't stop there. Check out the visual they used. And it's actually a map of my location in New Jersey. And on the map there, I can see that there are listings homes for sale with dollar amounts. So um, that kind of like sparks a little bit of FOMO for me, right? If I'm the guy that is looking to make some, like have a side hustle of listing properties that I own, I'm seeing people that are sort of neighbors that are already doing that. And so that tactic also uh, delivers one additional thing, social proof. And that happens to be number four of the five foundational elements of your landing page. So with social proof, People tend to trust what others say about your product more than what you say about it yourself, of course. Include testimonials, case studies, or reviews from satisfied customers to build trust and credibility. For example, with over 17,000 raving fans of his LinkedIn OS product, Justin Welsh is a master of putting social proof front and center. It's even above the fold right at the top of his landing page. He's also got it below as well. To make it easy for your customers to leave testimonials and also for you to capture them, here's a couple services that capture testimonials you can embed on your landing page. One is called Video Ask and the other is called Testimonial.to. Now, let's talk about influencer testimonials. Paying influential people like celebrities and athletes to endorse your product is kind of like an affluent cousin of customer testimonials. Definitely has its perks, but I recommend not pulling this lever until you, one, have product market fit, right? You're going to be iterating a lot. Things are going to change a whole bunch. How you're, you know, if you pay um, Kim Kardashian a whole bunch of money to talk about your new beauty products or whatever you've created and the whole thing changes, then how she's talking about it is kind of throwing away cash and you have to redo that. So number one, don't do that until you have product market fit. Number two, have legit customer, customer testimonials done first. Because you know what? At the end of the day, your customers will be just fine with verified testimonials. They might even like them more by seeing people that have used your product that are just like them. Fair, like something to think about. Whatever you do, do not pay testimonial actors. This is the thing. You can hire actors to record fake testimonials of your products. It's slimy, it's gross, and it's gonna come back to bite you in the ass. Don't do this, please. Okay. Number five of the, and this is the fifth and final part of the five foundational elements of your landing page is a clear call to action, AKA your CTA. Your CTA is a crucial element. It tells visitors what to do next. 
don't take it for granted that your customer knows what you want them to do. Subscribe, join, buy, whatever it is. Tell them with your CTA. So whether it's signing up for your free trial, making a purchase, or downloading a resource, a strong CTA stands out visually and uses persuasive language. Consider using action-oriented phrases that suggest urgency, like get started for free or try it today. For my problem framing toolkit, and there's a visual of this below, I combined action and commitment within the CTA. I want this, exclamation mark, is my CTA. It's bold, it's binary. Visitors will decide right then and there if they're ready to move forward. Just be careful with the exclamation marks. Now, for products where I'm trying to convey simplicity of access and use, I avoid phrases like learn more, explore, or discover. They suggest an additional commitment of time. And for leads who are leaning in already, they'll feel like you put a moat between them and your product. They, they want it. Just give it to them, man. That wraps up the five foundational elements of your landing page. Let's move next into what and how you communicate communicate your product's capabilities. In this section is called Benefits Over Features. While it's important to, maintain, to mention the features of your digital product, you'll want to emphasize the benefits. Show your customers the problems your product solves and the results they'll achieve. Describe their dream outcomes, how your product will improve their lives across one or more of these three foundational categories. One, improved health. Two, improved wealth three, improved relationships. In the end, when you focus on benefits, you demonstrate the value of your, that your product delivers. Speaking of value, I love Alex Hormozzi's value formula. There's a picture of this here. It goes dream outcome times perceived likelihood divided by time delay and effort and sacrifice equals value. So in other words, Show your prospective customers how your product delivers their dream outcome with a high degree of likelihood, but with minimal time and sacrifice required. Communicating value across these four dimensions packs a real punch. Okay, the next section that we're getting into is tools to build your landing page. So we've covered the elements of your landing page and how to communicate value. Now it's time to review the tools at your disposal for building your landing page. First batch we're gonna get into are the creator platforms. So if you're using an online creator platform like Podia, Teachable, Thinkable, Thinkific, Kajabi, Gumroad, this whole bunch, they all come with their own website builders or tools to make your product just readily available. Now, in an upcoming post, by the way, when you see these little like blurbs of text with a gray uh, highlight, that is sort of like a heads up about upcoming posts to keep a lookout for. In an upcoming post, I'll provide a deep dive on the major platforms so you can pick the one that's best for you. Some platforms offer templates, which are a great starting point versus the dreaded blank page. And there's a shot of ConvertKit and the templates in their template library that you can build your site from. Now, while these, come, while these platforms come with an entire suite of creator tools that will, will house your product, your marketing, your sales all under one roof, you may also opt for a separate landing page builder. Here are my top choices for you to consider. Card, that's C-A-R-R-D. This is a fast, easy page builder with loads of templates to start from. It's sort of like dead simple. Unbounce is one that's been around for a while. It's got more advanced features such as pop-ups and AI tools. And Instapage also been around the block for, for quite a while like Unbounce. It also has uh, experimentation, um, like A-B testing tools. Gray text. In a future post, I'll teach you simple A-B testing tools and tactics to improve your landing page conversions. And here I, I uh, took a screenshot of me actually going into card and building a quick landing page using um, some of the colors for passive profits. Now, it's worth mentioning that any modern platform like those above will offer a fully responsive pages out of the box. In other words, pages that look good across all devices. Let's talk about icons for a second too. Icons have a way of professionalizing your landing page. They visualize your words and phrases while also helping to break up large blocks of text. There are a few helpful resources you can use to find and tweak icons based on your needs without the help of a pro designer. 
and I linked to three of them in here, the Noun Project, Flat Icon, and Canva. Now that we've covered tools, let's talk through a few best practices for you to follow. Best practices. Here's a few things I've learned, quote unquote, or in parentheses, the hard way that you should keep in mind. Number one, remove exit links. Remember at the very start, we said that your landing page has one job to convert leads. So you drove your customers to the landing page for one specific action. Don't give them options to meander to other pages and contents. Believe me, content, believe me, they'll take you up on it and your conversions will drop. Number two, don't overcomplicate things. Your first digital pro for your first digital product, avoid those long form scrolling pages. Honestly, those things look like spam anyway. Um, avoid multiple pages. And in most case, um, adding your product. Oh yeah, and it, oh, sorry, I'm reading it. Uh, also avoid adding your product within an existing website. We'll talk about um, when to do that below. Combining a number of points one and two, remove links and don't overcomplicate things. Here's an extreme case that ChatGPT's landing page uses. It's a simple non-scrollable page without any navigation or links. As simple as it gets. And there's a, there's a visual of ChatGPT's landing page. Okay, third in best practices is just sort of like comparing landing page versus website page. So if you have an existing if you have an existing business website and your new product is related or serves as a lead magnet, in other words, like you're building the product so that it can directly sell uh, the next higher rung service, then it may make sense for you to embed it, embed your landing page into your website. And there's two options there. It can either be a page on your site. In other words, like yourwebsite.com slash product URL, or it can be a subdomain. In other words, product.yourwebsite.com. This approach will also enable your, your product to benefit from and contribute to your existing brand rep and SEO, right? So you kind of get that, that link juice that you've already built in your website that, um, that flows through into your, uh, your landing page if it exists in your site, within your website. However, this approach can also complicate things. For example, it may force changes to your website's navigation, flow between pages, and your content within those pages, existing content that is. You may also need custom development to strip out navigation of your landing page so your visitors don't drift like we talked about above. Finally, if your product is unrelated to your core business or serves a different market, keep your new product separate by building a standalone web uh, landing page. Okay, in the last section we're gonna talk about in this post, we're gonna talk about outsourcing. So the question is, would you rather outsource your landing page? Now, I hope that this post has given you some assurance and actionable resources you'll use to build your landing page. That said, you've still got a business to run. If organizing and building the product itself is all you can take on, there are many affordable professionals you can hire to design your landing page. The best place to start looking for these folks is within your network. Ask peers whose landing pages you like for recommendations. Ask friends and family, especially those who work in design and marketing, to refer you to trusted individuals or micro agencies, that is uh, agencies with less than 10 employees. Now a note, please don't pay a digital agency five or plus figures. That's a decision for later when you have revenue coming in from the product to justify that kind of investment. Big agencies will bring a lot more value than an, indi in, an individual, but that's, that's a, road, a bridge to cross down the road. Alternatively, you can source a designer through a talent marketplace. Upwork is one choice with lots of, lots of options for searching and reviewing available designers. There's a screenshot of here, in here of me and how the, some of the filters that I use if I were to be looking for a landing page designer. Alternatively, creator platforms like Podia and Teachable have their own little marketplace with vetted pros that they recommend. And there's links to both of those marketplaces in the post. A, few, a couple a few outsourcing tips. Outsourcing is never a set it and forget it activity. 
you've still got work to do and there are plenty of pitfalls if you skimp or do it wrong. Let me help you avoid the most common ones. One, don't outsource the first copy draft to another human or AI, that is. Not only do you know, do you best know your customer's pain points, but you also know the words that they use. Own that first draft. A good designer or copywriter will iterate from there to punch it up. But more so, learning to be a better copywriter is a skill you'll leverage over and over again. Use Copyblogger and Ship 30 for 30 to get better at writing. Not just landing pages, emails, newsletters, sales, copy, social posts, ads, too. Two, in, um, within the outsourcing tips, force yourself to create a simple wireframe. A good designer will be able to do this for you. But when you force yourself to lay things out, you'll find gaps. You'll also gain additional clarity to your vision, product, and problems you're solving. This leaves you with a much strong, stronger foundation for your designer to build upon. Use the examples above or find more inspiration by Googling landing page examples. Use Balsamic, Balsamic, I never knew how to say that. Um, there's a link to this tool. It's a dead simple tool to lay out your page content. In other words, building wireframes. And there's a visual of what those uh, wireframes look like. And three, next best practice with outsourcing is create your brief. So a project brief, <laughs> a project brief lays out what you're looking for. Include the following. One, what you and the company are about. Two, problems your product solves and for who. Three, links to your wireframes. Four, examples of pages you like, like the style, the layout, etc. And five, your timeline. It's important to have one for both you and your designer. Don't say something like, you know, as soon as you can get it done, it, it'll never get done. Or it'll just take way longer and you'll be frustrated from the start. Once you've written that all up, your brief, record a Loom video, what you're watching right now, and talk it out. This process will not only help you refine your brief, but you'll catch more gaps in your thinking. It also helps your designer pick up on nuances that a written-only brief lacks, right? Just like this, like you're getting, you're getting the, the read between the lines, the, the, the riffs that I offer versus just reading this. Bonus tip. Recording a video additionally tests your designer's ability to understand and speak in your native language. Struggling to communicate is not an additional burden you want to bear. Leave some follow-up questions in your video and ask them to record a short video response, which they can do directly in Loom. Fourth and final tip for outsourcing, agree to a fixed price. Set your initial budget and allow your designer to tell you what they can do for that price. In the US, a decent starting landing page can cost you anywhere from 500 to 1,000 bucks. I mean, these things will range, I get it, but that's a good starting point, especially for your first product and your first landing page for your first product. Try to avoid hourly contracts. It's tempting to be like, oh, you work for 10 bucks an hour, 50 bucks an hour, yeah, just go and uh, we'll, we'll play it by ear. The first time through, that just may be the only option because you don't know what you don't know. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of a starting point. But when you go hourly, it's sure to introduce time and budget creep and things can kind of get away from you. That's it, so let's wrap up. In today's post, we've explored the key elements of a successful landing page. A captivating headline, your headline should be clear and compelling, immediately conveying your product's primary benefit. Two, engaging visuals. High quality visuals such as images and videos are essential to help visitors experience your product's value. Three, compelling copy. Persuasive language should elaborate on your product's promise and highlight what, it, what sets it apart. Four, social proof. Testimonials and reviews from satisfied customers help build trust and credibility. Five, clear call to action, CTA. Strong CTA guides visitors with persuasive language using action-oriented phrases. Remember to focus on benefits over features. Use Alex Hormozzi's value equation and choose the right tools, including responsive design and icons. Adhere to best practices like removing exit links, keeping things simple. If you prefer outsourcing, create a detailed project brief and agree on a fixed price. These tips will help you create an effective landing page that communicates your product's value and drives conversions. 
Now that you've got your landing page playbook, the next and final stop within the four part Your First Product series is launching, AKA making your product available to the, for the world to find and buy. Shit is about to get real. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out when it drops on Sunday, November 12th at 8 a.m. Um, there's a little place to subscribe. And if you could, I'd love, uh, I'd love to you to open the post at some point and just rate. There's a, a very easy way to rate today's post. That gives me some feedback so I know what to do more of and what to do less of. Uh, and if you appreciated it, there is a link to share the newsletter. I'm actively trying to grow this. It's free. So what I need is a whole bunch of subscribers to get in here so that I can make money on the back end and continue to create this content for all of us. Speaking of growth, hello to Marie P, Mark S, Aline, uh, Alan C, and six more founders who joined Passive Profits this week, welcome. Uh, and lastly, if you have any feedback that you want to share with me or topics that you'd like me to cover in the future, at any point, whenever, click reply and let me know. Start a conversation, I'm here. Okay, hope you enjoyed this. Take care, see you in the next post.